Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I want to welcome you back again today. And we thank God, children, that we have the privilege of bringing the Word of God to you today. And we're going to continue in our message, The Bride and the Bridegroom. And I especially want to invite you now to study with me today. I like to teach it and read it to you so you can mark it down and know where it's at because we're going to need to know the truth to be able to stand in the evil days. So we appreciate the Lord. And I'm going to begin today a little bit more out of the book of John 17 in verse about, I believe it's about verse 17. And I want to read you a few verses, then we'll get in the book of Ephesians, a fifth chapter. But when Jesus was praying his prayer and fixing to enter back into his glory, he was turning the authority to preach the gospel into the hands of the apostles and they were to go forth and be his witnesses. And Jesus said in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. That's the apostles. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither, now here's what I want you to listen to. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all, now this is what we're getting to, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, I in thee, that they also may be one in us. That's a word in the Spirit. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me, <clears throat> and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, look at this, that they may be one even as we are one. Now children, there's simplicity to this. When Jesus is talking about we and us, he's talking about him and his Spirit. <laughs> He was the Word in flesh and His Father was a Holy Ghost in Him. It's so simple. And He said it Himself, I and my Father are one. Now I'd be a liar if I tried to say, well it says that but it means really two. Well if He'd have meant it to be two, He'd have told you it's two. But He said, I and my Father are one. So why don't we just leave it alone? Now watch this. I and them thou in me, that they may be made perfect, which means complete, in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Jesus said, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me. For I am that they may behold my glory, for thou hast given them, or given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. And Jesus said, O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name. Now the only name he ever declared was Jesus. And we'll declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Now children, let's get right quick, if you will, to the book of Ephesians about the fifth chapter. And let me tell you something you're going to face a little bit in the future. I can feel God are letting me know through the anointing that we're coming into some critical times and there are going to be certain peoples raising up that's literally going to hate the name of Jesus. So you've got to remember if they hated you or hated him, they'll hate you. If they believe him, they'll believe you. So don't let people get you down when it comes to the truth because Jesus told them, yea, the time cometh, and they faced it in their day, when they'll put you out of the synagogues. Jesus said, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he's doing God's service. And he said, this will they do because they know not the Father, nor me. Now the apostles suffered greatly to bring you this revelation and he's not going to let some preacher run around with his hidden horns 
hide the truth from us. We're going to have to search the scriptures and start believing on Jesus the right way, and I mean through their words. Now, children, go with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5, and I want you to listen to verse, read it out when you get time, verse about 23. For the husband is the head of the wives. Ladies, are you listening to that? Even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Come on. Who is the head of a Christian? Jesus is. So that means you need to obey him. Therefore, as the church, come on, is subject unto Christ. See, why is it saying that? Because we, if you're born again, we're his wife. You're not his girlfriend. You're not courting Jesus. And then at the rapture, you're going to heaven and get married to him. Now let me tell you something. If you're born again at all, you've got his name in your forehead. So you're married to him. Paul said, I've espoused you to one husband. So, watch your Bible. Therefore, as Christ is, or as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives to their own husbands in everything. That means every right thing. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, a lot of men can't stand their wives. See? But he said you love your wives as Christ loved the church. How much did Jesus love his wife? He died for her. Come on, most people won't keep them long enough. See? So he said, husbands, that's you married men, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. See, the washing of water is a Holy Ghost. Regeneration, the new birth. And Jesus said by the word. Well, didn't he say in John 15, Now you are clean, hallelujah, through the word that I've spoken unto you. If you want to really be washed from your sins, if you want to be really cleaned up, from all this sect of religions out here, get to the Word of God. And children, I'm doing it. You can do it. Dig into it. Believe it. And don't let mommy, poppy, uncle, aunt, sister, brother, wife, children separate you from that love. See, you better believe there's a delusion out here. And even Jesus said, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. Whosoever forsaketh not father, mother, wife, children, and his own life, he's not worthy of him. You see, why would God stick with me and give me a good blessing knowing <clears throat> that I'm preaching another gospel? Right after he had holy men, it died for this gospel. He's not going to do it, children. And not only that, but I'm going to tell you the truth. In Mark 16, you read your Bible when Jesus told them, Go ye in all the world, preach a gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And he said, These signs shall follow them that believe. He's talking to believing people. In my name, the believers, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Mark 16, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That's Bible. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Let me tell you about old preacher Row here, as long as God will keep me. I wouldn't let down any part of this Bible for the crowd. I'm not in this to please men, but I'd love everybody to be pleased with it. But I won't take a little thing out and throw it aside to get a crowd. God forbid me to do it. If we seek to please people, we can't be servants to God. Did you know it ain't your just hearing the word and amening, but it's a doer of the word. We've got to believe this word of God. And children, if you'll notice, the Bible said they shall lay hands on the sick. Mark 16, they shall recover. So then, after the Lord was received up out of their sight, what happened to them? 
They went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. If God confirmed his word, backed up his word, honey, he won't back you up with signs and wonders. If you've got lying spirits out there, if you're teaching lies, if you're getting seducing spirits to turn people on with, you really believe God's a backing us up? No way possible. He only confirms the word. And if you'll go read Hebrews chapter 2, Bible said we ought to give the more earnest heed to what we're hearing, lest at any time we let it slip. He said, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense and reward, he said, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us that by them that heard him, God also bearing the apostles' witness, both with signs, wonders, divers' miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. So children, this is where you are today. You're seeing God, buddy, really work to straighten out this end time. Why? Because he's getting them a church ready. And let me describe her to you. Watch this. That he might sanctify, verse 26, Ephesians 5, with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Come on. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. What kind of church is God looking for? Come on, church, read it. That he might present it to himself. How can Jesus present me to himself if I'm filthy, unclean, won't live right? Let me tell you something. Only way he can present you to himself is that you receive his spirit. You have to be born to him. And when you get the Holy Ghost, it means what it says, Holy Spirit. It's a spirit of wholeness. And that cleans and washes you from your sins. That's where the blood comes in, through the Holy Ghost. Because you're not born again without it. Children, I know we've been deceived in this time, but old Titus and different ones said, said he saved us by the washing of water and regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost. It has to work on us. Now, watch this right quick. That he might present it, or first of all, verse 26, that he might sanctify, cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. He's called a fuller soap. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. See, you're, that's not your righteousness there. That's Christ's righteousness. And remember, to her was given, she should be granted in revelation. Fine linen, clean and white. 19th chapter of Revelation. For the fine linen is a righteousness of saints. Come on, children. Watch this. But that it should be holy and without blemish, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. For no man yet ever had his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. Honey, he takes care of us. For this, for we are members of his body. Come on. Did the Bible tell us by one spirit we're baptized in 1 Corinthians 12 into one body? Jesus is the head of the body. The body's the church. You don't want to run around three-headed, honey. You need one head over you, and that's Jesus. He's the head of the body. The church is the body. Come on. You don't need them three heads. You need one. Jesus is the head of all principalities and powers. Everything is His. Children, He's the King of kings and your God and everything else. So, Bible said here, For we are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bones. Come on. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and thank God they too shall be one flesh. 
You see what a marriage means? I'm talking about a, a lawful marriage in God. Now, a lot of people get married for lust, get married for wealth, get married for this or that. But let me tell you something. God created.